was going to say, I did hit the button. Hey, <laughs> welcome to the uh, There's No Crying in Crochet podcast with Debbie from Madam Stitch and me, Biz, from Busy Crochet. I am just deleting the usual comments and then we'll move on. All right. So today we are going to be talking about um, a subject all of us deal with. But first things first. Got to do the business. Make sure that you like and subscribe to us on YouTube for notifications when we go live. Um, make sure that if you are following us on Facebook, that you are giving StreamYard permission for us to see your name so we know who's leaving comments. And Debbie, what's up this week? Oh, my goodness. Um, it Well, during the week, business as usual, just um working on some fun new designs i mean i usually do um scarves and blankets and things like that but i started yesterday um a poncho a granny stitch poncho really for this summer yeah it's in white and orange it's gonna be so fun. cool um so lots of designing going on but i have to brag a little bit my oldest mm -hmm. grandson who's 13 passed his first degree black belt that's his senior oh, nice. senior black belt he had his junior black belt and now he has his adult black black belt we went to watch that test it is grueling for oh, I know. three to four hours they were just beating the whatever so what is his discipline what what martial art is he karate doing? okay karate yeah so he has a first degree black belt karate wow. his the younger brother is a junior black belt mm -hmm. and his mom, my daughter-in-law is a senior black belt as well. So that's exciting. Good. Yeah. For them. So that's the big news for this week. What about you, Biz? Uh, for me, it's, uh, I was telling you earlier, it's the fluffy butt brigade in my house now because <laughs> we are babysitting on a daily basis. My grand dog, which is a Husky and she is only nine months old. So she's very, very opinionated and um, she doesn't really have any training. So that's what we're working on right now. We're doing some basic training and um, it keeps me busy. Keeps me very busy. Yes, it does. All righty. So what's our, what is our topic today? Our topic today is one that you and I actually saw a post in Instagram just a day ago about yes. help me work with <laughs> black yarn. Yes. We are going to talk about all the ways that you can make it easier on yourself to work with black yarn and darker colors because black yarn gets the bad rap, but there are a lot of, um, a lot of culprits in this category and working in low, a low light environment, which sometimes we have to do because of where we happen to be. So we're going to try to and give you all the tips today about how to make that an easier, um, an easier time for you in working with black yarn. When we were chatting about this subject, you and I were goofing around and I had said, when you walk through the valley of the shadow of crochet death, <laughs> Because that's what working with dark or low light or black yarn feels like. It is just, why am I here? I hate this. And I know. Why do I have to work with this? Well, we have good intentions, right? Sometimes oh, it's a project sure. that we choose. Sometimes it's a project we're working on for someone else. Um, and it has a dark accent to it, a black accent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, when you choose the project, you, you've got the yarn and you're so excited to get started. You get into it and go, oh, wow. What was I yeah. thinking? <laughs> like in your brain, you're like, this is going to be fantastic. This is, I love black. Black is so like, it's sleek, it's sexy. It's all these things. <laughs> the reality well, then, of black. <laughs> I should, I so should. Different. Different. This should be the time when I share the story about, I, I always crochet gifts for my kids for Christmas and they're all adults, yeah. have their own homes, that sort of thing. Um, for my oldest son, I decided to design a ripple blanket, but it has open work sections and then it has solid sections. Okay. And I bought a gorgeous tweed yarn from Lion Brand that I absolutely love. But I was sitting in the dark of fall 
in my chair at night trying to work on this thing going, yeah, you know, only place you really have to count is at the increases at the peaks, but then you have to know where the valleys are, where the decreases are. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And I would get to the next row and realize that I had put the peak over here and put the valley over here and have to rip it all. Oh gosh, it was, oh my but you know what? That blanket is well, it's not getting used right now because it's summer, but it has been so loved in the short time that it's been alive that yeah, it was awesome. worth every uh, that I had to go through mm -hmm. to get it put together. But. Yeah. And, you know, the thing is that all of those gifts that we end up making for people, they really like there's so much pride in them because they really do turn out so beautiful. So let's go ahead and talk about first off, what are the pros of working with black yarn? Well, if you don't, if you're making a home decor item like I was for my son, you don't always know what their, what goes well with their colors, right? Mm -hmm. So black goes with everything. It just, I was a musician for years. I wore black all the time. Yeah. It just goes with everything, right? Yeah. That's one of the pros and it plays well with other colors, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. As you said, it's a great accent color. Mm -hmm. um, Tony and I, for a few years, were really addicted to um, the, oh Lord, what is it called now? It's a tattoo show. Can't remember what it's called off the top of my head right now. But oh, ink something. Um, ink Master. Thank you. But one of the things that I learned from them, and I kind of always knew it, but they really made a point is that you can put color in, but if you don't have black there to help that color pop out, it just kind of, it's just blendy, you know, there's nothing that really makes it dynamic. And so you really have to have black in your design or in your work. Um, you know, especially if you're using, um, or going for something that has a really dynamic, punchy design to it. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, that was, it's really needed. It's one of those colors we're just never going to be able to get away from. Now, and we have to learn to, to work with it happily. <laughs> absolutely. I mean, and make friends with it, you know? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It doesn't <laughs> have to be the crochet valley of death. Ugh. So are there, I mean, we kind of talked about some of them. Working with black yarns, the cons, the cons seem to be huge. And they seem to be what really holds people back from using these darker colors because I've noticed in different groups, um, just either the general complaints of, oh my God, I had to work with black yarn or they say the customer wants it in black yarn. Is there any way to get around it? Or, you know, these right. things. So um, let's talk about some of the cons and maybe ways that we can overcome those. Well, the big one, I think, is it's difficult to see when you're working with it. So mm -hmm. it's difficult to see where the stitches go, where you're even supposed to um, insert your hook, especially with the kind of yarn I was using for the blanket because it mm -hmm. had a fuzz to it. So yeah. you couldn't see that opening where this, the hook should go. I used to, yeah. I did a lot of feeling around for where I should insert my hook. Um. So that goes along with stitch definition. Definition is difficult to see. Mm -hmm. So when you're looking at a black work, if it has an intricate stitch pattern, it's really kind of hard to see. So for me, for sure. when I'm working with black, I try to keep it fairly simple so mm -hmm. that the yarn is the star of the show rather than something that you can't see is supposed to be the star of the show. And that's not going to pop. Sure. Absolutely. Um, so I'm just going to bring this out just because we're talking about ways to help us see better while mm -hmm. we're doing this. This is what I look like when I'm working with black or dark yarn. I have my little light that hangs around my neck and I make sure I brought props today <laughs> and I make sure that I wear my extra <laughs> pair of glasses because my, I, I'm just getting old and I, I need that extra amplification or you can use uh, one of those lighted ring lights mm -hmm. that has the magnifier or something like that. These, you can get them on Amazon for really not very much. And 
my husband just got a six pack of these for 12 bucks. Mm -hmm. So it's a minimal investment for kind of a lifetime use. Right. I wear contact lenses. And so mm -hmm. since a lot of my crocheting happens in the evening, oftentimes if I know I'm going to be doing something with darker yarn, I will actually take my contacts out, put my re regular glasses on. And then when mm -hmm. I get to a spot that I can't see very well, I'll take my glasses off, put mm -hmm. the crochet up to my face to get it closer to my Okay, don't laugh now. I, I do the same thing. It's, I have to go like it's this. It's like, yeah, that, yeah. I feel like my grandma, right? <laughs> um, my grandma's the sweetest person on the planet. Um, right. But anyway, I will do that. Now, talking about lighting around mm -hmm. you, um, mm -hmm. as I said, I crochet every evening while I watch TV. And my husband and I have side-by-side -side recliners. Mm -hmm. So we've set it up so that to my left, I'm right-handed. So to my left, I have a lamp that has three speeds of lighting, low, medium, oh, okay. and high. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of times that's not enough. So we've put a pole lamp between our two chairs okay. that has one that shines up to the ceiling and reflects and lights more ambient. Wow. But then there's one that comes over your shoulder and acts like a reading light. And I can point Please. that thing right at my work, much like your neck mm -hmm. lighting and get more light on my project. So basically what you're, what you're referencing to is, and, and what I reference to is make sure you have lots of lights because mm -hmm. It's going to make all the difference in the world as to whether or not you love working with black yarn or you hate working with black yarn. Yeah. And it really made the difference in working with that black tweed fuzzy yarn. Um, mm -hmm. The blanket got done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. We all talked. Right, right. Oh, you know, something yeah. that my engineer husband might enjoy is mm -hmm. a headlamp. We would look absolutely ridiculous, but he's got a headlamp, puts it right there looks down, sees exactly what he needs. And if, if you got one hanging around the house, you as well use it for your black yarn, right? Absolutely. Um, okay. So let's talk about another con, which is how to, well, actually let's not move on working with the black yarn first, because I know that another um, thing that just came to mind is maybe having a white surface. Oh, right. Oh, oh, having white or something around it that you could hold your work up to, even if you just put a towel across your lap, like a, a kitchen right. cotton towel or something, just to help you see. Um, and that would show the holes in the yarn. So it would right. be easier to see where the hook can be inserted, where the stitches need to go, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but photography, when we're mm. going to take pictures, like if you are a maker and you are looking to um, say, hey, I've made this whatever it is and I'd like to sell it. Um, you want to show your product in the very best light. Or if you're taking a picture of a design that you've made, designing in black is probably one of the worst ideas ever. I've done it. And then I tried to make a video and <laughs> I couldn't even see my stitches. Like, what am I doing? <laughs> so, um, yeah. But photography, yeah, talk about I'm, how can we. Sorry, I made the mistake of designing a scarf for my husband in black because that would go with his winter coat. Of course. And then I made a pattern for it and tried to photograph it. And uh, you can't you can't tell what the stitch pattern is at all. Yeah. So just buy this black blob. Trust me when I tell you that it's made with this stitch. It's <laughs> It's, it's really it's gorgeous. You're going to love it. Just, just, and it's fun to make. You're just going to love it. <laughs> it. That's one of those situations where like you need to have a sample and say, this can be ordered in black because <laughs> trust me, you don't want me to take a picture of a black hat. You're not going to see anything. <laughs> and, and there really isn't a really good way to get around it. You kind of have to have, um, a really, really good lighting system in order uh -huh. to catch a black item 
in all of its right angles and be able to see the stitch definition and all of that stuff. Cause I know it's possible. I've seen stuff online. I've seen companies right. who have taken pictures of their own products and they were black, but um, when I'm sorry, I felt like I was like coming out the top of the computer there. <laughs> um, but when you're at home and you're just a simple, a simple girl in a simple spot or a simple boy in a simple room, it's really, really hard to mm -hmm. take a picture of a black item. So yeah, it's always about the light. Yeah. And I think that products you see online are probably taken in a light box. Oh yeah. Where, against a white background. I think another thing that you can do if you don't have a light box is take it outside and do it in um, natural light, not in yeah. bright sunshine but under a tree where you're getting filtered natural light, you can sort of get the same effect, but you would have yeah. to have some sort of light background behind it. I've, yeah. I was going to say, cause I've still had difficulties with dark yarns, even when I've been out in natural light, it just, for whatever reason, it diffuses it too much. Mm -hmm. And hang on just a second. Um, so it's really, it's difficult to see and, and hard photography is just a hard one with dark yarn. yeah well that's another podcast altogether isn't it <laughs> it is we're gonna have to do a photography one i apologize i'm i'm trying to make sure that i'm not missing anything <laughs> oh my um, goodness all right well let me help you out with that you're not missing anything but um i think we've covered most of the lighting haven't we except the light photography and we covered, yeah, we, I think we've covered our cons. Should we get into solutions? Um, oh, yes. Yes, because that would be lighted hooks, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm having a minute here. Okay, so I, I apologize that I was distracted for a moment. Um, I don't know if anybody has Amazon drivers who take their stuff to the wrong place. I, I have an Amazon driver who takes mine to um, four houses up this road for every single order. And I just uh, had to. That's crazy. Sorry, I, had to, I had to deal with that in the moment that it happened so that maybe they'll go and bring it here. Um, <laughs> but anyway, so yes, solutions <laughs> for working with black yarn. One of them is, well, we, obviously this. We talked about the lighting, right? So mm -hmm. um, if you don't have a lamp or something that you can dedicate to the space where you're working, if it's possible, get mm -hmm. near a window. So mm -hmm. I have this great bow window in the front of my house that lets in all of the light. So if I sit on that couch, I can see the couch is right in front of the window. I can see lots of good angles for my crochet. Mm -hmm. um, that's another possibility is to sit near a window or sit outside. Um, mm -hmm not ideal for all situations like today yeah. we have rain, but, um, but it is a solution that you can use, here. right? Yeah. Uh, one of the things we mm -hmm. haven't talked about are hooks. Mm -hmm. um, we, I haven't used them, uh, but I did have a colleague when I was um, teaching music and I would be music directing a show and we would be in the dark um, and I'd have a moment to crochet. My director gave me a lighted hook to work with that that worked really well. Mm. Um, I don't have it now because I don't usually need it, but that's a solution. You can buy lighted hooks in all different forms. Um, I did a little yeah, bit of research on them. Yeah, you can buy them battery powered or rechargeable. You can. <laughs> buy them in a kit so that you have a handle with interchangeable hooks. Um, you can buy a kit with all the hooks. Um, so there are all kinds of possibilities. I just went on Amazon and did a quick check. Mm -hmm. um, lighted crochet hook is all you really need to put in. In fact, I'm going to put that in the comments. Um, so if you search for lighted crochet hooks mm -hmm. in Amazon, you'll get a whole list. Yeah. We have a comment um, that goes back to lighting. Wooly, 
wooly chicken crafts. That's awesome. Good lighting, a good lamp, a white something behind your project, like a white towel on your lap. Mm -hmm. Good biz. Um, I sometimes crochet a white cotton thread along with the black yarn and take it out later. Ooh, that's an awesome tip. It is Kudos a great tip. to you. Yeah, I'm writing that in my notes. Um, so you just leave it, you just leave it um, unhooked to anything and then it just comes out at the end. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to share that one with me. Yeah, just cr crochet over the top of it, I believe. Oh, that's you an know, awesome. Like tip. you would with a lifeline in knitting. Yeah. I'm going to put that in my notes. Yes. All right. So we already talked about, let's see, what kind of hooks here? Oh, someone else had suggested using a light colored hook. So for instance, now I don't use these on a regular basis. These mm. are furls, <clears throat> but that white would contrast with the yarn. Sure. And make it a little bit easier to see where you're inserting your hook and where your yarn is. Um, so a light colored hook. I usually work with um, these Susan Bates. Yeah. And they come in all, of all kinds of different colors. Ones. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> um, and that is everything we need to know about hooks. Uh, we did find a great article by Crochet Kim. And yeah, she does we, a. Are we, we should, plan, I'm sorry. Are we planning to link that in our description later? Yes. So okay. in the YouTube description, yeah, I will make sure that it's in mine. Um, yeah. But yeah. we have a great article where she compares and reviews various lighted hooks. Mm -hmm. So if you're really serious about that option, I would mm -hmm. highly recommend that you get an inexpensive one first. Give it mm -hmm. a try. Mm -hmm. See what you like because hooks are pretty. Uh, I mean, I'm pretty particular about mine. It, it could be lighted and be the most fantastic thing on the, in the universe. But if it doesn't help me crochet, mm -mm, I'm not exactly. using it. Exactly. I, hooks are such a personal thing. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's, it's just like picking out your, this is going to, of course I'm going TMI. It's like, we're, you know, what kind of <laughs> underwear do you wear? Are you a brief or are you a bikini? You know? It, <laughs> yeah. It's pretty, yeah. It's, it's pretty, pretty personal. personal. <laughs> <laughs> so I would highly recommend trying one out that's not expensive, that that looks a lot like the, the hook that you like to use. So mm -hmm. like I said, I use Susan Bates in line, find one. Now it's going to have a handle on it because it has to have somewhere for the um, lighted stuff, right? Um, yeah. The lighting stuff. But make sure that it has the inline or the tapered that you mm -hmm. like and a shaft that's long enough. Mm -hmm. So if it's got only a teeny little shaft and you need more room, now yeah. it's not going to work for you. Yeah. And they make them in so many different styles now, because there are mm -hmm. the ones that just have that tiny little hook where it pops on the top of a, of a handle. And then there are other ones that do have that more space. So you're not stuck. And that crochet Kim article does have a, a large variety. I think there's eight, different hook uh, variations or sets that she looked up and reviewed. So it's a good place if you're looking for some information. I'm going to put it in the comments here. Okay. And then we'll make sure it's in the description as well. Wooly chicken crafts. I, thank you for being here. My hubby has a headlamp he uses when he's working on vehicles. So his hands are free. Good plan. I kept borrowing it. So he got me one of my own. Those are great too. See, <laughs> there are tools that we can borrow and procure. I love it. All right. What else do we have listed here? Um, we talked about that. Oh, this is one that you may or may not be able to do, but when you're choosing a project and you know you're going to be doing it in black yarn, Mm -hmm. choose a project that has simple stitches, mm -hmm. repeated stitches, or it's an open work pattern. So it's not mm -hmm. solid um, fans and, and Super intricate. cables and all of that Lots kind of, of stuff. 
Well, that's one of the that's one of the things that we're going to suggest is to count, but we don't want to make that uh, something we have to do, right? right? So, if you're choosing a project, keep the stitches simple, um, and try to get an open work pattern or something that you can easily see as you're working. <laughs> well, the only reason that I bring up you know lots of counting is because. I have a tendency to memorize a pattern mm -hmm. within the first couple rows, yeah. especially if it's a repeat. Yeah. So I'll do a lot by feel more so than I'll do it by counting after a while. And I don't want to have to work on a pattern that I literally have to look at every single stitch that I'm working on with right. dark yarn. It's just, it's impossible. <laughs> that would be horrible. So yes, keep it simple. Ooh, here's a good one. Um, do you ever use stitch markers to yes. figure out where things are? I do. I use stitch markers all of the time. They're one of my most favorite tools, mm -hmm. but especially in a situation like this, and especially if I'm doing something where I do have to count or pay attention and, you know, like so many stitches requires a bobble or a popcorn or whatever, yep. I will count it out and I will put a stitch marker in those places where it also helps me to pay attention to and not do like you had said, where you get to the top of the hill and you, you cocked your hill, because <laughs> if you have to count, you're very easily going to miss something along the way. Yeah. And I just hate a project that slows me down. I crochet for me is mindful, yes. right? I do yeah. more intricate stuff. Yes, I do. I don't stick to mm -hmm. just single crochet. This don't get me wrong, but Right. For me, crochet is not only my business, but it's also my stress relief. Mm -hmm. So if my crochet is stressing me out, I've yeah. failed. I'm going in the I'm wrong mindful <laughs> crochet, right? This is not working for me. So, so I try to, I have just yesterday when I was starting a new project, um, that one that I was talking about, that's a wide mm -hmm. poncho. Yeah. I put stitch markers every so many stitches so that yeah. I did not have to count 140 stitches three times. Preach, Amen, girl. Sister. Right. Absolutely. So, ooh, do you don't happen to have one close at hand? Because I want everybody to see the kind that you use because they're pretty mm -hmm. cool. Yes, I do. I was actually just, I'm reverse engineering a pattern that I did about 10 years ago and realized I never wrote it down. So uh, now I have the nightmare job of trying to figure out what the heck I did. So I am breaking out my little stitch markers, which you can get Amazon, like a butt ton of them in a package for like nine mm -hmm. bucks. And they come in all different colors. So if you want to color coordinate anything, I'm just going to show you, this is the small box that I keep on this oh, table. that's awesome. That looks, I can't, no, I can't remember what those are called. Are they actually called stitch markers? They are. Mm -hmm. Oh, all right. Yep. Well, because they look a lot like um, some safety pins that you can get. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, they, if you look up, if you go on Amazon and you look up metal stitch markers, um, uh, gotcha. any of that, it'll pop right up. Perfect. Got to get me some of those. Mm -hmm. They're wonderful. Uh, all right. So have you got any more suggestions for our audience about what they can do? Um, got a couple more on the list. I mean, the, the lighted hooks, I noticed that we, we didn't talk about crocheting in the car. Or we didn't. And I have like hashtag travel crochet mm -hmm. all over my Instagram. <laughs> because it really, um, they, they will help you with that. Although I don't, I just don't recommend black yarn at night in a car. It's just, it's not a smart thing to do. Um, not that it's a, a dumb thing, but it, you know what I mean? I wouldn't make that choice to be honest. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. That's, that's what we mean. <laughs> I that would choose something mean. light that, that kind of reflects in the dark. Um, but we did touch on this one where strong, mm -hmm reading glasses, um, or something like that. I know my mom for a very long time had, um, what is that thing called a magnifying glass that had that ring light around it. She used it for quilting, yep. but it would, it would suffice and do the exact same thing in a situation where you're working with darker black yarn. 
So anytime, anytime you can magnify what you are doing, you're going to see better. Uh, what about these two can go together count often Yes, and don't be afraid to frog. Yes. Um, Always. Afraid, you got to do it. Yep. You got to do it. Well, and it, those are go-tos for every single project, yeah. but especially when you're working with the dark stuff, because if you're putting that kind of time and energy into your project, you want it to look nice at the end. And mm -hmm. yes, I mean, we all adopt the whole Amish thing where if th there's a mistake in it because we're human and it makes, you know, it keeps us realizing that we're not flawless, all this stuff. However, <laughs> I'm a perfectionist <laughs> and I really don't espouse to the whole, I'm okay with there being a, you know, a, a problem with my, I I'm, it will bother me so badly. I have to rip it out. So oh my goodness. Become friends with frogging. <laughs> it's just a part of life. It is one of your best crochet friends, right? Yes. The frog. That's what we should design is, is a little bobblehead frog that just sits right here. <laughs> Don't be afraid to frog. I'm sorry. Just and it needs to that. have one of those little drawstring things like Woody yes. did. So that it has or, like three different things. He could be like the Pillsbury Doughboy where you just punch his stomach. <laughs> <laughs> we digress. Oh my God. <laughs> I see a future for there's no crying in crochet oh for God. all the tchotchkes, right? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> oh Holy gosh. cow, that's hilarious. Oh my gosh. All right, so we've talked about things that you have to pay for. Mm -hmm. And we've talked about some things you don't have to pay for, mm -hmm. but there will come a time when you just don't want to spend the money on the mm -hmm. fancy stuff, even yep. the, the inexpensive fancy stuff. So what would be some suggestions for someone who doesn't want to spend money, but wants to solve the problem so they're not ripping their hair out or the project? It's really going to boil down to what do you have in your house? Do you have a light towel? Do you have a white background? Mm -hmm. Can you get near a window? Are you able to do it at a time of day when you can use natural light? Mm -hmm. um, those are all going to be your best friend. Um, they're beyond spending a few dollars. Well, and the other thing too, is you can still do stitch marking without having to spend the money on stitch markers. Right. Just get yourself some white yarn and mark yep. your, your stitches along the same mm -hmm. way. It's the same thing. Um, it's being innovative and ingen ingenious ingenuity, using ingenuity um, to figure out what can I use at home to make this easier. Right. Yep. Absolutely. All righty. Um, so do we feel like we have anything extra that we can add to this? I don't think so. I think we have... We have solved all of the issues, at least the ones we know of. <laughs> yes, yeah? exactly. There might Who be knows? others. There might be. Who knows? Um, I did. I did see one more. Take frequent breaks to avoid oh, yeah. eye fatigue. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so when I take my contacts out, so I can take my glasses off to see, it's harder on my eyes to see with glasses than it is with contacts. Now what I'm wearing right now are reading glasses. I would love to take them off, but I won't be able to read the screen in front of me <laughs> if I take it off because mama be really blind. Um, <laughs> so, you know, I just try to find the coolest looking pair of uh, reading glasses I can. Well, they are snazzy. Well, I have a cooler pair, but I'm, I haven't made myself brave enough to wear them in public yet oh look at you oh my god those are i look so cool. i look like dame edna in those if you're old they, enough to remember dame they edna. give me some sally Raphael, sally jesse Raphael vibes the color <laughs> do they really yes but it's not a bad thing okay well maybe next broadcast I'll, I'll if they were round they would, they anyway, would be totally sally jesse but but my eyes get tired yeah. when I have my glasses on, which is why I don't wear them very often um, during the day. Mm -hmm. So take breaks. It's not, uh, you know, get up, walk around, go get a drink, whatever. 
go to the bathroom because, you know, some of us do a lot of crochet and forget to get up. Uh, yes. Like <laughs> and then when just we try to it. move, you just can't. <laughs> But oh, that goodness. is a really smart thing to say, though, is um, maybe set a timer for yourself. Mm -hmm. Limit, purposely limit, because we have to do the most that we can to protect ourselves. Because even though this is our craft and some for some of us, it's our job. Um, we want to make sure that we're taking the very best care of ourselves in the process. So yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. So make sure if you find that you are straining yourself or your eyes are feeling strained set a timer and make yourself quit it's hard yeah, to do tough. it's tough really tough or shift yeah. to a lighter project exactly yep so alrighty I would like for you to tell me what show did you watch this week oh my goodness um I did I cat? I haven't caught the end of NCIS yet. Um, Hawaii. So I have to watch the end of that one this season. Um, I'm anxious to see what happens there, but I've been getting into the Brit box show. So yeah. I think I mentioned um, the one that you and I are walk watching together for the first mm -hmm. time is why didn't they ask Evans? Yes. And the reason I was drawn to this one because of the stars. Yes. Um, I'm always interested to see what stars we see in other things come up with when they're gathered in a new drama. Yeah. Um, and this one has the star of the show is Will Poulter. And I actually mm -hmm. looked up where he's one of those faces. You just know you've seen him yes. somewhere before. He's so he's famous. He's been around since he was a little kid. And he's not that old. No. Uh, or maybe he's older than he, than yeah. he looks, but he looks like <laughs> he's got a baby face, but we know yeah. him from we're the Millers hilarious Jason Sudeikis movie um, guardians of the one. galaxy. Oh, you need, it's hilarious. The maze runner. And I watched that series because I read the books and they were awesome. And the Chronicles mm -hmm. of Narnia. Mm -hmm. He's been in all of these fabulous dramas, but yeah. anyway, the premise of the show is that he is out golfing with his, he kind of acts as a caddy and companion mm -hmm. for uh, his doctor friend who's an older gentleman who has trouble walking and the scenery. Oh my Lord. They're out on the Hills. Of, I don't know where it's shot Scotland That's or uh, somewhere just gorgeous in the British Isles. Um, and he looks down off a cliff because the golf ball has gone off the cliff and he mm -hmm. sees a body at the bottom mm -hmm. of the cliff decides to walk down and investigate. And it starts this whole thing mm -hmm. of him trying to figure out who the dead body is mm -hmm. and why his last words were why didn't they ask evans mm -hmm. who is evans mm -hmm. why didn't they ask him what and what is who is this guy right and it's post uh world war ii mm -hmm. so it's a period set piece which makes it very interesting and fun to watch because you know I love the sets, the costumes, the oh my gosh, how are you gonna the cars, everything. It's just been it's been fun. Also, um, how they interweave um relationships of like higher class, lower class, that kind of stuff mm -hmm. as as the times are changing. Yeah, it's an Agatha Christie book mm -hmm. adapted to this. And Hugh Laurie was the other one that I was interested in seeing. Um, he, I think he's a producer or a writer or something, but he's actually in he it. He wrote it and directed it. Yeah. And so um, in the, I've only watched two episodes. They're an hour long. Mm -hmm. At the end of the second episode, we finally see Hugh Laurie. Did you see that biz? Yes. I've actually watched all three because I'm a bit oh. of a binger. <laughs> so I know what happens and I know who Evans is. So I'm not going to say nothing. Don't tell me. Don't tell mm -hmm. me. I need to see. Nope. And when you and I originally talked about it, you had said that it moves really slow in the first one. And you were kind of waiting to see how it was going to come out in the end. And hopefully it was going to get more interesting. I felt like from the first episode where they did a lot of character building, they did. They definitely did a lot more story in the second one. Yes. And so the second episode for me was mm. much better. 
Mm-hmm. I don't know if this speaks to our our sort of ADHD way of watching TV where everything needs to move fast. <laughs> I don't really need that. Yeah. But there is a point, there's a sort of a tipping point where you are doing too much character development and not mm-hmm. and di- and dissecting is not the right word, but interrupting the storyline so much that mm-hmm. it's hard to get a grip on the storyline. I like mm-hmm. a balance between, okay, let me know who these people are, I agree. but I need to see an advancement of the story. So I know what I've just gotten myself into and yeah. how that carries over into the next episode. And sometimes you really have to persevere. You have, it's, it's a, <laughs> like, yeah. why do we have to do this while we're watching TV? <laughs> I've got to make a personal choice. Am I investing yes. my time in continuing with this show or am I going to cut my losses and shut it off? You know, <laughs> right? why are we having to make these decisions? And, and if, if I'm still making that decision in the second episode, usually it's a cut our losses and run sort of yeah. thing. So yes, it does absolutely get better. And clearly it does mm-hmm. great things in the third episode, which I'll it's have to very watch good. this weekend. Did you, did you see Emma Thomas or Emma Tom- Thompson? Thomas? Thompson. She is, Thompson. I don't think she was, wait. Oh yes. She was in the second episode, right? Yeah. But she, that's what? like the only time you're going to see her too. Oh, I have to go back and watch it. Um, yeah. I'm so bad at catching things the first time. So I have to, if it's, if this one is jam packed with oh, it people is. and, and yes. storyline and what's yes. happening and who's yeah it's just so jam-packed that it benefits from a second watching so you can ca- oh yeah i see I what he did that time. agree yes yeah i completely the, agree in the very first said. episode mm-hmm. he pulls things out of this dead guy's pockets yes and all of those things come back throughout they the do story. and they're all significant ah! yeah. it's just such a great show it is it's very good highly recommend completely clean, very family friendly. I mean, even, even for the dead part, there's a little tiny bit of violence. Um, I want to say in the third where if you don't like violence at all, but it's, I mean, on a scale of one to 10, it's probably a one and a half for me Yeah, because I, I, I watch stuff, but um, <laughs> your stuff is a little more violent than mine i think it is um but this one i feel like has it has a level of danger in it Mm -hmm. that you they prove that you don't need all the blood and gore and people Mm -hmm. killing each other and well people do die in this one um but um you don't need all of the the music that's dastardly and someone's gonna it's just a beautifully written piece it is i really enjoyed it and um apparently Emma Thompson is part of the production team along with Hugh Laurie on this. So, you know, there's a lot of little cameos in there. I, I just thought it was great. And I really liked the juxtaposition of the relationship with the main characters where she's a lady and he's not. Mm-hmm. So, and he's okay with that. Yes. I mean, he wasn't threatened by it. It wasn't where mm-hmm. like he felt like he had to be less because they were brought up together it was just a nice refreshing view on it because I know a lot of the period pieces I watch, there's always this very stiff upper lip British Mm -hmm. and they aren't allowed to have any kind of like close relationship with somebody. So maybe it's taking, I don't know which one is the real one. You know what I mean? Maybe it's taking Liberty with that freedom because it's, it's a more modern it, I don't know. It would be interesting but... to see how Agatha Christie originally treated it. Um, I mean, another instance of that that I saw in, I think it's in the first episode, we find out that his father is a minister. Mm-hmm. Will Poulter plays the organ in his dad's church. Mm-hmm. But he had he wants for his son, which we all want for our kids to mm-hmm. have an amazing job, amazing opportunities, mm-hmm. have the best of everything. And when they don't, take the path that we feel like they should Mm -hmm. then in our minds we almost see failure in the near future where Mm -hmm. will will polter is very clear i want to run a mechanic shop yeah and i've invested in this in london with my partner Mm -hmm. and this is what we're going to do get over it move on yeah and he wasn't really um 
asking for permission. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like he made the decision and that was kind of nice too. I, I, I liked the way they built those characters. There's a lot of character building in this. So yeah. Yeah. I'm excited to see the third episode now. So you've got not me. To say that the my... first ep- yeah. Not to say the first episode is boring. It's just slower. Yes. It's slower. Um, and if you have trouble connecting dots, it can be a little confusing, I think. Mm-hmm. But they do better about connecting the dots a little, you know, later on the second and especially the third, the third one, you know, what's going on. So, Good. Yeah. Yay. Twill be fun. <laughs> Already. I think have we've we solved, solved all, all the of these. Pro- we have. And I love the comments. Um, there's um, someone who commented, I like the white towel idea. Thank you. So mm-hmm. hopefully we've helped some of you. Yeah. Not, we're not encouraging you to run out and buy a box of black yarn and start your next project. But in the eventuality oh, that you have a black yarn project, yeah. we hope we've given you <laughs> some helpful hints to get you through the frustrations that will inevitably befall mm-hmm. you. Yes. Yep. Cause it happens and somebody will ask you for something in black and you have to say yes or no. <laughs> if it's a family member, you have to say yes. I'm just saying oh, that's a, you know what though? That- <laughs> I'm going to say, I did say no. Did you? Yeah. Cause my daughter, um, I made her a pink sweater and she's like, this would be so amazing in black. Nope. <laughs> You're going to have to learn to crochet. <laughs> Because it is not happening. <laughs> I might, I might succumb to the desire to just see. Who knows? <laughs> I'm not saying you should, but when it comes to family asking you to do crochet, yeah, just saying. It's hard, to, hard say to say no. no. For sure. All righty, ma'am. It is time. It is. All right. So I hope everybody enjoyed today's episode of There's No Crying in Crochet. Remember that we are on YouTube. So make sure that you subscribe and like to both Madam Stitch and myself, Busy Crochet. Follow us so that you are aware of every time that we do our notifications of our, uh, because we always post early, but we're always live every Friday at 1 p.m. Central and 2 p.m. Eastern. Eastern. Yes. Um, so we are going to say bye for now for this week. Next week, we're going to come back with another great subject and another great show. So I hope you show up here and, and join in with the chit chat. I can't wait. Me either. All righty. We're going to say bye for now. See ya.